Hi, everybody. I'm Ina Kratzenberg. I'm the Chief Business Officer at Ginkgo, and it's very nice to be here with you all today. Uh, many of you are probably, probably not familiar with Ginkgo Bioworks, so I'll spend the next 15 minutes telling you a little bit about the company and why we're so excited about our ability to support all the great work that you're doing here in advancing cell and gene therapy. So let me start by telling you the fundamental mission of the company. Um, the company was built on the mission to make biology easier to engineer. And I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir to all of you, you know biology is not easy to engineer. So the way we went about, about designing biology uh, to make biology easier to engineer is to really use the fundamental principle that biology can be programmed like computer code can be programmed, except instead of zeros and ones, we uh, program A's, T's, C's, and G's. And like computer code, you need a way to read code, write code, compile, run, and debug code. And that's what we've started uh, the company with a mission to do, and that is to build a, a, a process, a platform, a system that allows us to synthesize DNA, I'm sorry, to, to sequence DNA, synthesize DNA, and do rapid um, design build test cycles to really test out the theories on our design constructs and whether or not they work in the, in the um, application that is intended. So what we've done is put together a platform that uses high throughput automation, a lot of robotics and sophisticated instruments. We use artificial intelligence and machine learning, just like many companies do, to, to curate information and learn from the data. We have ability to do massive library construction, and we iterate around the design build test cycle very, very rapidly. Um, the company was founded about 13 years ago in 2008. We now have over 650 employees. Most of them are located in Boston, Massachusetts. We have over 300 robots and um, 200,000 square foot of space in our main location in the Boston Seaport area. Just this year, we have added locations in Cambridge, Massachusetts, um, the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, the Netherlands, our first um, international location. And we're looking to expand even further. Uh, just about a month ago, on September 17th, we became a publicly traded company under the symbol DNA. So we have big shoes to fill there. Um, we uh, went public after closing our SPAC merger with Soaring Eagle. So what does Ginkgo do then? Um, really what we do is encapsul encapsulated with this black bar in the middle of the slide. We, we design, write, and debug DNA code. And what we do is we take input from our customers who tell us what, what problem they're trying to solve, what product they want to make, and we design the output to fit their needs, which could be a cell program, um, which may be a strain that is engineered to express certain proteins, or cell lines that are optimized for produ production of a, a protein, a peptide. Uh, it could be data sets that can inform your R&D research to be more efficient in certain things you want to test and learn. It could be an optimized small molecule or an enzyme. And in order for us to do that, we have two key aspects of our platform that we deploy. One is called the foundry, and that's what you see in the green wedges on top of the circle, and the other is what we call code base, which is the bottom three wedges um, under the circle. And um, code base and foundry work synergistically together. Foundry is essentially the infrastructure that we use to perform the experiment, it is the wet lab that we have, except this is a very automated and um, robotic-driven wet lab that we have. Uh, Codebase is essentially a collection of all the biological know-how that we have and all the physical component parts that we have accrued from the various projects that we have done, along with a bunch of biological tools that we've been able to use for our, our projects. So a little bit about the foundry. Um, again, it's the physical infrastructure, and to date we have five what we call bioworks. Each bioworks is about 20,000 square foot in space, and each of them are designed to optimize and, and gain economies of scale from the experiments that we run. Um, each of these bioworks are, are located in Boston today, and we continue to expand on that. 
Uh, in addition to building physical infrastructure to expand our ability to do more cell programming, we also hold ourselves accountable to achieve what we call Knight's Law. Knight's Law is a goal that we have set internally for ourselves to improve our efficiency of doing cell programming. This is how we drive economies of scale, and we measure ourselves against that. And uh, our goal is to reduce the cost of doing our cell programs by 50% every year, and to increase um, the capacity, our ability to do what we call strain tests is a unit of measure that, that we use internally to, um, to identify how many design constructs that we have tested. We want to do 3x that every single year. And since we started building the BioWorks, uh, our initial BioWorks in 2014, we have achieved those objectives over the last uh, six years. We're now building BioWorks six and seven, by the way. Um, so what do we do at each of the foundry? We basically do the design, build, test, and ferment cycle. And under design, we, we use a, a data-driven um, approach. It has algorithms and models that we've developed from many projects that we have worked on to help us come up with the initial constructs that we wanna, that we wanna build. And then it goes to build, and I'll tell you a little bit more about build in a second, but basically one thing that I think is so in incredible about what, what has been done today at Ginkgo is that we have engineered a pretty significant uh, fraction of the overall uh, universal metabolic map to date, and, and it tells you a bit about uh, just how much we have already done there. Um, under test, this is where we want to really um, utilize our ability to do high throughput screening and, and uh, optimize for ways we can really improve the scale at which we can uh, test and analyze whether or not our, our constructs are actually working. And um, we do about 20,000 samples a year already as is, but in addition to that, uh, we have continued to invest in new technologies that will allow us to move um, the envelope even further. One of the really interesting um, collaborations that, I, that I'm highlighting here is with Berkeley Lights who's also here at the conference today. Um, they have a really uh, state-of-the-art uh, optofluidic optofluid, platform that we have partnered with them to identify new workflows that can be used uh, to really analyze really interesting uh, data that will help us design um, better, better outputs. And lastly, under ferment. Ferment is um, a unit operation that we have set up where we use the Amber 250 to uh, do process development and process optimization for manufacturing. And we have what we believe to be the world's largest um, collection of Amber 250s. We have over 200 of them in total. And we use that to allow ourselves to take a, um, a full-scale manufacturing condition and environment and downscale it to the 250 milliliter environment so we can run a number of examples, uh, a number of samples that allows us to be uh, readily available to deploy that strain in a full manufacturing context and make sure that everything will scale accordingly. In addition to fermentation, we also have uh, process development, which is uh, really the chemical processes that follow the fermentation process. And we have, um, we're now actually expanding to 5,000 square feet of space with 10 different chemical um, uh, engineering operations that can uh, give us the ability to further derivatize uh, the fermentation uh, product. Uh, so I talked a bit about Codebase or Foundry, now it's Codebase. So Codebase is the second component of our platform, and again, it's the collection of data and knowledge that we have accrued from the various projects that we've done. We have uh, pulled gene sequences from publicly available sources. We have proprietary gene sequences that we've acquired and licensed, and, licensed, and we continue to grow that with every project that we do. So we have organisms, um, we've worked on over two do dozen different organisms, micro organisms to date, worked on a number of different cell lines, we have genetic code and, and uh, biological tools. And we're really excited about how that expansion of code base continue to inform us on how we can do the experiments better. Um, and uh, the gentleman on the right here, Patrick Boyle, he's also here today and uh, will be on a panel discussion tomorrow. So what, what's really exciting about the Ginkgo platform is really the synergy between Foundry and Codebase. It gives us an ability to really rapidly 
innovate and provide value to our customers. Um, I talked a bit about sequencing and, and synthesis. Uh, one of the things I wanted to highlight about synthesis is that Ginkgo is the largest consumer of synthetic DNA in the world. We have um, a very extensive con contract with Twist, and in addition to that, we have acquired a company called Gen9 back in 2017 that allows us to construct, routinely make constructs of 10 KB or greater. Um, we have a bunch of strain engineering work that we've done, and you can see the numbers on the slide. Uh, I think they're, they, they tell you a bit about the, the scale and the extensiveness of strain engineering work that we have done to date, and also with screening, not only uh, using our high throughput to test, but also using our small scale fermentation capacity to really uh, do a lot of fermentation runs a year. So when Ginkgo was uh, initially formed, our, our customers tend to be in the non-therapeutic uh, businesses, but biology doesn't really discern what market it goes into. So in the last uh, several years, we've really made a concerted effort to move into more of um, the therapeutic markets where we think synthetic biology can actually make um, a pretty important contribution to help advance all the drug therapies that are being in development today. Uh, just to highlight a few examples here, we worked on an antibody discovery project with a company called Toshin. They are now acquired by Apsi in um, identifying some COVID-19 antibodies. Um, we are currently in partnership with Roche on a genome mining project to discover novel antibiotics. We've done some enzyme discovery and optimization work for a major pharma company. Uh, we're working with Synlogic to develop microbial um, uh, therapeutics. These are live microbes that are used to, uh, uh, to, to address metabolic disorders. And we're working with Biogen on um, uh, a gene therapy manufacturing platform. And we worked with Moderna to improve their process uh, uh, optimization to drive uh, production costs down. And in non-therapeutics, uh, we really have spanned the market uh, across ag, um, animal proteins, uh, industrial enzymes, industrial chemicals, and everything in between, natural products, plant extracts, et cetera. So there's a lot of work that we've done, and again, because biology doesn't discern what market it goes into, a lot of the learnings that we have from one project is really broadly applicable to many others. Is there a trick to this? Oh, there it goes. All right. Um, okay, so now, down to what's, what's relevant to this group. Um, here are some ideas of what we can utilize the Ginkgo platform and broadly what synthetic biology can do to advance cell therapy. Um, we, we really think of them in terms of two buckets, what we can do in the discovery process and what we can do to support the manufacturing process. Under discovery, one of the things that we're really excited about is doing combinatorial libraries of car components and domains. This is where the utilization of a high throughput screening platform allows us to do not bias the design towards a small number. We don't have to make decisions on what we think will work before we actually, actually try them out. So this is important for us to learn what works and what doesn't work, so we're pretty excited about that, and we're, we're currently doing a project in that area. Um, another uh, area that I want to also point out is the TCR neoantigen library by library screening. This is where, again, scale uh, really enables us to, to test out a lot of interesting theories and concepts. Um, and in manufacturing, I've mentioned Amber 250 as a model that we use. We can certainly use that, uh, that, that uh, infrastructure to develop scaled down models that can help um, identify any early manufacturability issues. And there's clearly a lot more of these ideas. I have less than a minute, so I'm going to breeze through the next one. Okay, so in gene therapy, the way we think about gene therapy is it really falls under these buckets, but primarily it is to improve the safety, efficacy, and manufacturability of, of the, gene therapy, the gene therapies. So under tropism and immunogenicity, there's a lot that we can do there utilizing our platform in like protein engineering, for example. Uh, to help identify uh, interesting new, new um, capsids that can, that can uh, remo uh, reduce immunogenicity. 
Um, in cargo, we think there's a lot of work that can be done to improve cargo size that allows gene therapy to be more broadly applicable. And certainly in manufacturing, uh, we think that there's a lot that we can do to optimize manufacturing of the cell lines and improve um, titers of these cell lines to make manufacturing more affordable. So I'm at time, but thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, we're, we're here at the conference. Uh, please come by and see us and talk to us. We'd love to figure out how we can partner with you. Thank you.